and we are back. Hello everyone, welcome back to 5 Minutes Code channel where I will be explaining the solution of every problem of lead code at least for weeks within less than 5 minutes. So without wasting time, let's get started. So today's problem of the day is split the array which is marked as an easy level problem but I think it's a medium level problem because there are various assumptions which we have to make. So yeah, let's find out what we will be given into this problem and what we have to do. So we will be given one array ARR of integer type and what we have to do, we have to return the count of number of ways we can divide this array into. We can divide this array into such that the let's say I've divided this array into two parts, so the XOR of both parts is equal, both parts is same. Okay, so we have to return in how many groups we can divide, like number of ways we can divide this array into two half, into two parts, such that their XOR is equal. Okay, all right. I think the question problem statement is also clear. Let's find out what we how we can do it. So if you know a property of XOR is if a XOR look first of all a XOR a is equal to zero. Okay, a XOR a is equal to zero. It means what? It means to divide to get to get uh, if the XOR of two elements is equal that means the XOR of whole array will be zero if we can divide the array into two halves such that their XOR is equal then the whole XOR whole array XOR will be equal to zero because suppose let's say this is the XOR of first group a1 okay this is the XOR of second group a2 let's say a2 now if we have to XOR of elements of each group is equal XOR of elements of each group is equal so if they will be equal in that case a1 is equal to A2, then it means A1 is equal to A2. It will only happen if A1 XOR A2 is 0. If A1 XOR A2 is 0. Okay, I hope that is clear. So, if we will first of all find out if the whole array XOR is 0 or not. If the whole array XOR is not 0, it means we cannot divide it. It means we cannot divide the array into two halves. So, we will simply return 0. Otherwise, if the array whole half array is like the XOR of whole array is 0, it means we can divide. Now, you will be thinking how we can divide. Look, 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 look. The XOR of whole array is 0. The XOR of whole array is 0. Okay. Now, whatever group we divide it into, let's say if we take this 1, 2, 3, whatever group, if 1, you can see 1, 2, 3 is there, 2, 1, 3 is there, 3, 1, 2 is there. So, whatever group we can divide this array into, their XOR will be same. Their XOR will be same. Why? Because let's say, um, let's say what, A1, A1 is the XOR. Of I divided array into few half into few bar into two parts with some elements in first one a1 so their xor is a1 now I divided the remaining elements will be xor a2 okay now what look the xor of whole array is zero the xor of whole array is zero so a1 xor a2 is zero it's like for sure whatever group we will divide whatever parts we will divide it into okay so a1 xor a2 is zero that means a1 is equal to a2 that means a1 is equal to a2 so we have got a count one so what I told is if the XOR of whole array is, equal, is 0, it means whatever part, like in two parts only we will divide, but whatever elements are in one side and whatever elements are in second side, their XOR will be equal to 0. Their XOR will be equal to same. Okay. So I think that is clear. Now, how we can divide, how we can count the number of groups. Look, the total number of groups, total number of ways, total ways in which we can divide this array into two groups will be 2 raised to the power n, for sure. Okay. 2 raised to the power n. But one thing which is issue is, let's say 1, 2, 3 is in one group and another group is 0. Another group, there are no elements. So we don't want to divide it into such parts. So there, it will be two ways, two ways. First of all, let's say in first group, 1, 2, 3 is there and in second group, 0 is there. 0 elements are there. And second one is in the first group, 0 elements are there and in the second group, 1, 2, 3 are there. So to avoid both of them, we will simply do like 2 raised to the power n minus 2. Okay, that is the total ways. And one more thing is there. You can see 1, 2, 3 is one way and 2, 3, 1 is also one way. 2, 3 in one group and 1 in another group. That is like a duplicate, but uh, let's say two ways are there. 1, 2, 3 and 2, 3, 1. So we have to avoid this as well. How we can avoid this? Total number of groups, which we which we total will be made, which will be divided by 2. So that is the way. Okay, 2 raised to the power n minus 2 divided by 2. So if we will simplify this, we can simply write 2 dot 2 raised to the power n minus 1. Okay, and that is minus 1 divided by 2, oh, sorry, minus 2 divided by 2. So, we will take 2, 2 common from everywhere. So, this 2 will be cutting, this will be 1, this will be 1. So, total number of ways will be what? 2 raised to the power n minus 1 and minus 1. So, this is the total number of ways. We have to calculate this. I hope that will be clear. Now, let's move on to the code part then. Meanwhile, you can try to code it by yourself as well. Okay, all right. Meanwhile, if you have got the explanation, please don't forget to subscribe the channel as well because it will motivate me a lot. Okay, so let's say int all XOR, let's name it all XOR is equal to 0 at this point. I will be using a for each loop int i from ARR and we will do simply all XOR, XOR is equal to i, something like this. Okay, and after that I will check if 
me copy this all XOR. If all XOR is equal to is not equal to zero, it means we cannot divide the array. So we will simply return zero. Okay, all right. Otherwise, otherwise what will happen is we have to find the count of the total number of ways. And you can see the answer could be very large. So print it by modulo with 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7. Okay. So how we can do this is simply we will be using a power function. Power and uh, I have to get the power of 2. N is the count. So let me do something or we can simply write arr dot length. Okay. And after that, we have to also return something like mod. We have to calculate the mod 10 to the power 9 plus 7. So we can simply do something like int mod is equal to 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So I will pause this mod as well. Now there are various functions which I hope everyone has used that. So I will not be explaining that power function here, but let me code it for you. So it will be something like, okay. So I will do something like static and integer type power function is there and uh, base is there int p let's say power is int p and uh, int mod okay uh, one thing which i have done is i have did arr dot length minus one why right? because i we have already seen it was two raised to the power n minus one and minus one okay so i will be storing my result long rest is equal to one let's say and uh, i will do something like while p is greater than zero so if while p is greater than zero and if let's say power is odd if power is odd it means we have to let's say uh, we are using a recursive way we are using a recursive divide and conquer approach to calculate the power you can check that as well and uh, i will do something like result is equal to result into base and uh, total mod i will also calculate it something like this okay and after that i will be dividing p is equal to p by 2 and after that, I will update my base is equal to base into base divided by mod. Something like this. Very simple. And at last, I will be returning integer. I will type cast this rest to result and integer and something like this. Let's compile and run this to check if it is getting accepted or not. Meanwhile, you can go through various videos to check what is this power function. Otherwise, this video will get too long. Okay. All right, let me try to submit it. Meanwhile, if you have loved the explanation, please don't forget to subscribe the channel, like the video and share your feedback into the comment section. And I will see you again tomorrow. Till then, keep on coding and bye.